All right, so, yes, 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 Believe Saints, and I'm here with Cobra Mouth. We're gonna be talking about how we created our song, at Paul's second, what's the song called? <laughs> <laughs> Hello, this is Blue Sick. We're here in Liverpool. I'm here with Cold Mouth because we've created the song together um, and the song, our song is called Open Shut. So we're going to be doing a little breakdown, give you the background behind us. How we came up with this song and the whole, the whole, um, whole experience, the whole journey around it. Okay, so I'll introduce myself very quickly. I'm Blue Saints. You already know I'm a singer, songwriter, spoken word artist. Um, from Liverpool and to the right of me, I've got um, Cobra Mouth with me. Could you introduce each of the members? Yeah, I'll introduce myself and let the other chaps do themselves. <laughs> All right. I do the service. Uh, yeah, I'm Adam Jones. I do very cool, mainly performance wise, but uh, songwriter, content creator, manager extraordinaire. <laughs> I'm, I'm Lewis and I just show up and play guitar. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Dylan and I play the drums. <laughs> oh, we are missing Sam. Yeah, yeah, we miss his presence. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, so we've also got Sam's also a part of Cobra Mount and um, uh, he couldn't be here at like, this moment. But he's here in spirit. The funny thing is, right, we, we originally all met in Liverpool. Uh, we met in there um, and there's a place in town called the Philharmonic Hall, which is a scout, so you know what it is. Um, and uh, we, we met in a place called the Music Room there, um, Philharmonic Music, the, the, the Music Room over there. And we had a jam, do you remember that? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> So it's like, a, it's a crazy, um, crazy, it's a crazy event, full circle moment that we that we came uh, you know, that we came back, yeah, back yeah, around. Yeah. We didn't really jam very much, did we, between mm. each other. It was more like we'd bake ideas mm. and bring them to practice, but like that format where at frequencies in the Philharmonic was the first time that like, I'd actually interacted with other musicians and mm. tried to jam doing metal vocals. Yeah. The first thing that like hooked us together was that jam circle. That's right. And the combination of vocals. You was first called Black Leaves Bambi, and then now you call called Cobra Mouth. What's the journey behind it all? Uh, so, uh, Black Leaves Bambi folded in 2019. We kind of felt that we wanted to do something different. It'd be cool to dive into how we came up with this song. How did this song itself come about? Yeah. So it's. It was a demo that I originally had. I think I had like a sample of some guitar that I'd stretched out, some 808 drums, um, and just like a, a verse over the top with that kind of chorus hook. Um, and yeah, I think we sat on that for a while, and then after a little while, it, I, I doubled it and kind of, I think I'd been listening to a lot of Sleep Token and kind of suggested to Dill that I double the, the song length and, and he can write some drums for it. Yeah, when he first sort of showed it to me, it was still very, like you said, on the cusp. It was more like a, what was it, like trappy kind of tune? Yeah, I guess it's, it was hip hop inclined initially, but it's definitely yeah. got that trap vibe to it, isn't it? And um, I think you, you'd initiated how it kind of feels like the whole song is sort of building up, building up, building up. And then, similar to you, I think we were all into Sleep Token quite a bit. And I think we'd been floating the idea of doing some sort of collaboration anyway. And we had mentioned earlier on, we were like, well, Blue Song would probably be the <laughs> person to do it with. Uh, like you said, obviously that full circle moment and obviously listening to the finished track, how it does have kind of like gradual build up and then comes in with Blue's verse at the, the end with the drums behind. Mm. It's almost like, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say it's as far as two different songs, but it's really got a, a different feel when it, when it comes in. Yeah. With like your verse and, and the more or the acoustic drums, I guess. Yeah, so you sent me the you sent me it, and I remember listening to it, and I, I, similar to what you were saying, it had like this build and building that you were talking about, and I was like, oh no, yeah, like oh, I can 
I can definitely give myself from this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so that, that was definitely something that that that, um, that that pulled me in as well. Yeah. And also with what with the with the the lyrics that I was hearing as well. I was like, oh, okay, I think I know what to talk about. Lewis, uh, what, uh, what was your process with the guitar? Um, well, the chords are pretty much already there, really, weren't they? Yeah, I just I figured some stuff out on a baritone and just left it at that. Yeah. So it was pretty boring until you came along. But it was just like the same chords, but just picked mm. and like part muted. Yeah. And that's yeah, with a little like motif or like riff nice. sprinkled in every now and then. Yeah, I love with the guitar part that you had in place and the picking bit. It's kind of like offbeat, so it gives it a little bit of a. That's actually, a, that's actually a little mix-in, but like I, once Lewis had done that, I thought like it to cut through the mix, it needed to like it pings from either side, so there's like a tremolo on it and also a little panner, so it like has that kind of like pumping sound, because that's what I liked about it, like the shuntiness and the like it added like a bounce to the track that it didn't have before. And I think like if, if you took it out of the track now, it would sound completely different because it doesn't have that same energy keeping it going. Yeah, that's yeah. that. <laughs> yeah, it comes in at the last second, just adds a little cherry on top that makes yeah. it. Yeah, perfect. Fantastic, and see, and that's from me, that's from me, the, the music, what it is, it all these be. different yeah. parts, these work, the different working parts. Okay, what about the lyrics? Like, so what, what inspired you? Um, um, the lyric? Creation. I'm, when I'm writing, I kind of write about things personal to me rather than like a lot of people write about societal things and um, I, I don't really view things like that. So for, we were kind of in this patch with Cobra Mouth where we weren't, we were trying to put as much money into making a decent record as possible so we weren't going out on the scene as much as we used to and getting involved and there was a lot of geographical distance between us so um, I was kind of isolated a lot and also felt like while everyone else was inventing in music I wasn't so for a long time my perspective shifted to just sitting on my phone and, and scrolling through it and seeing everyone else doing the things that I wanted to be doing in my mm. life and even though you know we're, we're the other side of it now, it kind of still resonates a bit because there is it happens a lot, especially like I'm sure most people have it. It's the more we get into this digital world where everyone's lives are online and compared to each other, you do often find yourself just sat scrolling, comparing your life to others. So the main chorus hook is about that really. And like I, I guess at the time as well, because I felt like I wasn't doing music, my job, which is nothing related to music, like that. When I say about taking my place where I don't belong, that's you know that's what I felt like I was doing. Um, and the the lyric verses discuss um, just my kind of position where I feel like I'm this kind of angry guy that wants these far out things in life like playing shows and, and doing you know unconventional stuff for a living um, but also I have to be this kind of indifferent character that's quiet and just gets on with it and tries to make the best of it that I can of situations. Because I'm nothing but indifferent every moment is a bitch but I convince myself to follow safely stuck down in my heart I've been holding on to pointless notions of self-violence timeless place where no one listens suffered silence never glistens finally got the part to live in and I guess some of it as well is like that that period a few years ago I was I was still getting security in life and felt that there was a lot that could be taken away from me with a with a moment's notice. So some of it is discussing that about that as well. Like uh, there's always something that will take away what you've got and you've kind of you've got to be grateful for what's in front of you. Uh, admit admits trying not to compare yourself to others so much and kind of stand on your own. Um, which I guess kind of as a segue, but like I, I didn't. I have to say, like I'm not versed in uh, Christian philosophy, so a lot of your lyrics I've kind of been waiting until now mm. to ask you about. But yeah. like I could see comparisons in the fe the themes of isolation that I put down into mm -hmm. what you wrote. So I guess this is where I ask you how yeah. did you come about with your lyrics. That's the great segue. But yeah, no, it, it was those. It was. 
how I came about with my lyrics was me listening to the, the lyric content as well as the music. Um, so when when you sent me the track, um, it, it, it ends with the new old bitch. You said um, just another sinner. Yeah, that's exactly. So when when I hear that line, as I'm listening to the song, it's got this feeling, and uh, uh, with the chorus as well, like as you said there, a lot of the things that that, that's, that, that from from my perspective is grappling is this feeling of feeling stuck, isolated, and um, a lot going on, even maybe even touching on depression, wherever. Um, the, the 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 topical conversation of social media and thinking of times when I felt that way. So I was writing from the perspective of a person or myself, my past self, um, or myself the future, because that always gonna happen whenever. Um, basically of of feeling lost and trapped and stuck and from a Christian perspective we're all sinners. We all do we've all got um, bad within us. We all need um we all need saving, we all need... We're all going through these things that we talked about, right? These, these, uh, these sort of, uh, the, the, this sort of content. Yeah, so, that, so that's what I was writing there about, like, um, what, what do I say? I've, uh, you mentioned, like, uh, yeah. guitar work, so. There we go. Oh yeah, thank you. Yeah, so the Hebrew word for hata, if the Hebrew word for sin is hata, which means to miss the mark, right? Um, that's what it literally translates to. So you know, missing God's mark. So again, when talking, I was thinking, I was writing it from like, what's the meaning of life? You're feeling stuck and lost, and you keep feeling like you're you're, you're missing God's mark, like you're, like you're not you're not reaching your um you're not doing what you know you're supposed to be doing yeah. um, so that's why I was like um, um, uh, I'm trying to go back over my verses like, <laughs> you know what I'm like, I remember I said that I love it I love it <laughs> <laughs> like, so Elohim is another Hebrew word for for, um, for God it's in the Bible that's the Hebrew that's got one of God's names um, so sin um, as I hear uh, after I listened to all the content and what's going on, following from you, kind of like you passed the baton to me, I felt because um, I was already listening to the to the song and I'm already feeling that it's about him um, feeling lost, feeling like you, you you're going through depression, wherever else, right? That's the way the song felt to me. So I was writing from the perspective of when I felt that way, and then um, from the and from the perspective of when other people have felt that way. Um, so yeah, but I was mostly focused on myself when I felt those sort of feelings. Um, you're slipping in darkness, so when you're feeling depressed, when you're feeling down, when you're feeling these negative feelings, you're slipping in darkness. So again, I'm writing the perspective of feeling like you're falling down, like you're, like you're being swallowed by darkness. Um, and so again, I asked the question to the audience, what happens when you're harboring the heart full of harmful tense arguments that scar your chest with harvard stress? So I'm saying what happens when you're feeling all these negative emotions that are almost battling within yourselves, having these, having these arguments inside you. Um, I've been hollering in my room more or less. So like when you're feeling depressed, or you're feeling really down or angry, you're just in, the, in your room, whether you're saying it out loud or you're saying it in your head, you're just screaming in your room. I've been um, hollering, you know, screaming in my room. I've been hollering in my room more or less because awfulness sits on a spoonful of sorrow dressed. So I'm saying this this awfulness and this horror and these sorrowful feel I mean, and these uh, sorrowful feelings, it's as if I'm, I'm swallowing them because they're sitting on a spoon full of uh, sorrow. So um, these horrors are sitting on a spoon and the spoon of, 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 of sorrow. So all these different mi all these different emotions I'm swallowing in, threatening me to swallow mess. Yeah, so again, like, like when, you, when you're feeling, I'm sure quite a lot of people can attest to this, whenever you're feeling like down or whatnot, sometimes the more negative you, you, you think, 
you, um, you, you start to notice more negativity around you. For I don't swallow it. So that's when I, I wanted to still add a sense of um, of hope of hopefulness in there, um, uh, and um, be reminded that it's God that helps me come out of that. So I was writing from that perspective, but it can be it can be used in a more general point of view, where it's like rather than rather than um, falling down into the um, into the darkness, rather than taking you know, that spoonful of horror and, and distress, wherever, um, like push it away, but I don't swallow it. I let myself invest, because like I'm saying, I let myself invest in El Shaddai before I die and my neck that rests. So I'm saying, um, like I said before, whatever you put your, like, your, your mind on, whatever you focus your mind on, that's what you, you, you start focus. that's what starts entering your life yeah. more. Yeah. So, so in the, that can also be flipped to say whatever you invest your mind on, whatever you invest in, um, that's what you'll see around you. So I said, I, I, rather than invest in myself in in negativity and darkness, I'll invest myself in El Shaddai and God. That's another name for God. In El Shaddai before I die, and my nefesh rests. Nefesh is another Hebrew word for the soul. So before my nefesh rests, before my soul rests. So before, basically, essentially, before I die, I'm gonna make sure I invest. It, rather than investing in the darkness, I'll invest in, in the light. I'll invest in, in God and, and the good things. That's the general gist of, of my days. Yeah, so yeah, 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 yeah. the breakdown of it, and obviously, yeah, yeah. kind of like, like it builds with the music, but yeah, it builds with like positivity towards mm. the, the end. It's funny because like the the. Like my first bit is like it's very stereotypical me. It's like it's kind of just going through all the things that are bothering me and that I'm getting on with it at the same time. And like it's, it, I never really think of it like oh I'm writing a song about depression or whatever. Mm. It's very stereotypical for depression because I probably was depressed when I was writing that. Like just you know uncomfortable with the circumstance, feeling like I'm doing the same thing, feeling like I'm trapped in it. And then like. It's, it's funny because you'd never really admit that yourself, but someone will usually go, yeah, you're, you're depressed, man. <laughs> yeah. That's kind of like what you've done with the song. You're like, oh yeah, he's depressed. <laughs> like, I'm going to give this guy some hope. And then like, you talk about like finding the light and finding the positive things to invest in, which is you know what, what has ultimately got me to a better place by mm. investing in the positive. So even though you use different language and, and beliefs and philosophy to convey that, I think it's that's what the song was meant to be about, you know, mm. like admitting what's wrong and also acknowledging the things that you can do to, to fix it. Yeah. And that it's not, I mean, like every human, the basic need is, is hope. Everybody wants hope. Absolutely. And I think that's what the song's about, really, finding hope. And I think that the, the two, like the, the depression and the, and the positivity and the recognition for investment and change is. That's what makes it work, it sounds great. Yeah, no, like that's... Like I say, it fits musically as well. Yeah, no, I, I like that, yeah, no, definitely. Yeah, I, I couldn't throw it <laughs> Yeah, so that's basically the whole journey and the, the breakdown of the song. Thanks for, thanks for watching. Jeez. <laughs> Enjoy the song, please. Yeah. Please. <laughs>